Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Tales from a Retro Gamer. My name is Brett Weiss. Today I'm going to be talking about something that was really important to my life and still is. It's the All Game Guide. This was an online database to describe, catalog, and review every single video game, every single computer game ever released. Now, the All Game Guide is no longer in existence, but I want to tell you uh, for the next few minutes my involvement with it, how I found out about it, and how it led to my career in writing, you know, writing about video games and, you know, all other types of pop culture. So let's go back to the 1990s. I was working at Walden Books. I began working there in 1993, and I worked up there up until 1997. Now, 1997 was a pivotal year for me with game writing, because that's when I got this incredible email about the All Game Guide. Now, real quick before that, I want to tell you, up, leading up to that point, of course, I've always been interested in writing and reading and books and video games and my love of writing, reading, and my love with video games sort of combined to, to form my career where it is now. Um, so leading up to uh, my job with the All Game Guide, which I got in 1997, I had tried and failed at uh, some game, gaming related um, jobs or, or potential jobs. So I was a freelance writer. A little bit. I had uh, written for some small press magazines, you know, just fiction magazines, horror, science fiction, and that kind of thing. Had a little bit of success there, but you know, nothing that was going to pay well or anything. And so my fiction um, career sort of never really took off. But nonfiction uh, has been nonfiction writing has been my bread and butter for over two decades now, and it really began with the All Game Guide. Leading up to the All Game Guide. I tried to get a newspaper column on video games with the Star Telegram. I actually, you know, wrote up my proposal, sent in some ideas, and and that just never got off the ground. Uh, luckily, years later, uh, last a little over a decade, you know, I started writing for uh, the Star Telegram. Anyway, that's a story for another time. I also started working on a book in the mid '90s called Car Captain Cartridge Rates the Video Games. Now this was going to be a big reference guide with Sega Genesis and Super Nintendo games because I was working on this in the mid-90s. Unfortunately, I could not find a publisher. Again, story for another time. Let's get to the all-game guide. In 1997, uh, my brother-in-law forwarded me an email. It was sort of a classified ad or a help wanted ad, that kind of thing. And it was an email from something called the all-game guide, which I was unfamiliar with, All I'd although I had heard of the all music guide it's a big you know the all game guide is is related with the all music guide as like a pop culture company you know cataloging describing reviewing things like that and with the all game guide that was a new startup and it was this email it said looking for writers to write about atari 2600 commodore 64 ColecoVision, and television all that kind of great stuff and this was 1997 when retro gaming was just really under the radar. There were a few fanzines being published. Uh, Leonard Herman had written his uh, Phoenix book, and I've got an early edition of that. Phoenix, The Fall and Rise of Home Video Games, which he told me I was the fourth person to buy this book and you know, back in 1994, which I thought was really cool. And um, there were some fanzines being uh, published in the 90s. This is the very first uh, issue of Digital Press fanzine. Um, Here's something called Video Game Review. There were quite a few video game fanzines being published, although retro gaming writing, retro gaming in general, was still still very much under the radar. Not like it is today where it's super mainstream. Here's one called Slapdash, which was published by Russ Perry. And uh, that was that and the digital press fanzine published by Joe Santulli. Those are the two more popular fanzines. And I was reading those, really loved game writing, loved writing about video games. But I still hadn't gotten my feet off the ground, uh, you know, as far as establishing a career or even as a as a hobby. And so when I got this email in 1997 about writing for retro gaming, I was like, I was really shocked because I was really surprised that there was a company willing to pay people to write about, you know, retro video games and new games as well. And because in the 90s, that was just almost unheard of, getting paid to write about retro games. Unlike today, where there's a lot of books coming out, a lot of articles about retro games. 1997, a much different time. So I was very excited about that. I wrote up some sample reviews and sent them in, 
and I was hired pretty quickly right away as a freelancer by Mike King. Very nice guy, very cool. I'm still uh, friends with him on Facebook today, and it's nice to hear from him from time to time. And with the All Game Guide, there was tons of work. You know, there were thousands and thousands of games. I could write descriptions, I could write reviews, and eventually I became an editor with the All Game Guide. So I, I wrote for the All Game Guide for three months before I felt confident enough to quit my job at Walden Books. Uh, Walden Books, I worked there full time as a receiving clerk. It was a fun job. And I got to, um, when we would have celebrity autographings, I would talk to them. Story for another time. Um, anyway, I quit my job at Walden Books because I had two young kids at the time and I wanted to be able to stay at home with them. And All Game Guide offered me the flexibility where I could be home with the kids and still work. And like I could work late at night or early in the morning or during their naps. And I could live the dream, you know, writing full time. I also started writing for the Comics Buyer's Guide around that time. Now, the All Game Guide was great. I was, you know, I would buy like two or three hundred, you know, instruction manuals off eBay. And that way I could do the descriptions of the games. And I would write a lot of reviews as well. And they were sending me games to review, you know, brand new games for PlayStation and Nintendo 64, Sega Genesis, Super Nintendo. They were sending me games to review. Very, very cool. You know, right at the tail end of the Super Nintendo and Genesis era. And as the PlayStation and Nintendo 64 were getting popular, it was so much fun. And the All Game Guide, not only was it a great gig, something I really enjoyed, there were several writers with the All Game Guide that went on to become you know, pretty popular within the retro gaming community and beyond. Uh, John Jackson Miller became a best-selling author. He wrote several, uh, quite a few reviews for the Intellivision for the All Game Guide, but he went on to write, you know, be a best-selling author writing, you know, novels about Star Trek and Star Wars and writing, you know, Iron Man and other heroes for Marvel Comics. Really became a big shot in the industry. It's awesome. Chris Baker went on to work for Marvel and uh, he's, he was uh, a really good friend of mine, and he writes, uh, he loves uh, superhero video games, really went on, uh, advanced far in the industry, and uh, great guy. Um, Earl Green uh, went on to write books about uh, Star Trek and Doctor Who, and he runs the logbook.com, wrote for Classic Gamer Magazine, really good guy, really good friend of mine as well. Now, Chris Cavanaugh was my editor with the All Game Guide, and he still works for the company now, but just in a different, uh, under a different name and everything. It's, the company's changed a lot since then, uh, since my day writing there, but, but he's still at it, and he also published uh, Classic Gamer Magazine, which is a really cool, uh, one of the first retro gaming actual magazines and not just a fanzine. Very awesome. I think it might have even been the first, you know, slick professional retro gaming magazine. And, um, so a lot of, and sorry I'm not mentioning everybody that I worked with at the All Game Guide because a lot of writers that I still know today uh, went on to great things after writing for the All Game Guide. Now, one funny anecdote about the All Game Guide, they, they didn't just open up all the systems to everyone right away. Uh, at first we were writing about PlayStation and NES and a lot of the more popular consoles and retro consoles, Genesis, Super Nintendo. Well, they held back like the Odyssey 2 and the Atari 5200 and several others that were just sort of, I think they wanted a lot of holes filled in the more popular consoles first. And then once that really got going, they would open up the older systems that we could then write about. And it was sort of a first come, serve, first, come first serve basis for us freelancers. And I was really excited for them to open up the ColecoVision, Atari 5200 and Odyssey 2 because I love these consoles. And so, but you had to wait, I had to wait a while. Well, it just so happened, one weekend, they opened up the Atari 5200 that you could write about. And once again, it was first come, first serve basis. And I believe around this time, they also uh, allowed us to start writing about the Odyssey 2. And among some of us, Earl Green, you might remember, uh, you were writing about the Odyssey 2, and we were just, I think we were really writing very quickly to try to get our reviews in before the other person did. And there was one particular weekend, I remember, my daughter Katie, I won't go into too much detail here, but she had, let's just say, a stomach illness and was awake for like 30 hours or whatever. And as her parent, I was, you know, had to be right along there awake with her because she was every hour or two getting up, going, you know, doing her thing. And so I had to be there to take care of her. So I could not, I, there was no way I could sleep. And she kept getting up and getting sick and I had to take care of her. Well, this actually worked out to be great timing because that was when they had opened up the Atari 5200 and I believe the Odyssey 2 as well. 
and I was, you know, just up around the clock cranking out descriptions for those and reviews for those game systems, you know, just trying to write about as many of those games as possible because I really love those systems before the other writers could. And you know, it, it, it was kind of almost kind of a race. It was that was a lot of fun. And if I had to be up for 30 hours straight, you know, that was the best way to do it. You know, being able to write, you know, around the clock about games that I loved. So anyway, uh, the all game guide is long gone, like I had said. And what was what happened um, to me, at least, with the company after 9/11? You know, the the terrorist attacks of 2001. Uh, after that, the publishing industry was hit hard. Every industry was hit hard. And why I say the publishing industry, because the All Game Guide had big plans to move forward with a book series. And I was going to be a, a key part of that. Um, my write-ups, I was going to expand some of those or contract some of those, whatever the case. And I was going to keep writing. And we were going to put out a series of books on retro games. Every console, every game. And like I said before, I believe I'm... Um, the All Game Guide, the company that does the All Game Guide, the All Media Guide, had published books before, like the All Music Guide, and um, they were going to do books like this for video games. And I was super excited to work on this project. Not only would it mean more work, but would it be actually appearing in print, which is always exciting for a writer, especially in the '90s when I hadn't been published a whole lot. Unfortunately, I got let. You know, after 9/11, they scaled back and they canceled the book series, and they told me I could only do $50 per week of work. Obviously that wasn't going to cut it. They kept on-site writers, but all their off-site writers, most of them they let go, but they let me stay on because uh, they like my work, but just for 50 bucks a week. And then eventually that disappeared as well. So I was in a little bit of a bind and um, the 2006 Comic-Con, I met uh, McFarland Publishers and they, uh, you know, I talked to them and I ended up uh, writing a series of books myself. I thought if I'm no longer writing for you know, the All Game Guide and this book series was canceled. Why not just do my own series of books, the classic home video game series? Again, a story for another time. Um, but what gave me the confidence to do the classic home video games books myself was Leonard Herman's a ABC to the VCS. And I admit, you know, I was talking about the 1990s earlier where there just wasn't a whole lot of video game writing beyond the fanzines going on. He did have uh, two books published in there, ABC to VCS and Phoenix. So that, but that was, there wasn't just a whole lot of video game writing in the 90s. So that's why I was very fortunate uh, that the All Game Guide came along uh, when it did in 1997. Not only did it give me, you know, just thousands of games to write about for, you know, a lot of systems I loved, not only did it do that, it sort of got me writing on a regular basis. I really polished my style and got, a, got to be a better writer through writing for the All Game Guide. I met a lot of friends to the All Game Guide that I have correspond now with through Facebook and that I see at conventions and everything. So the All Game Guide was just a really big deal to me. It, it meant a lot to my life. It, it helped kickstart my classic home video game book series. It got me you know, professionally published on a regular basis. And, you know, just a really big deal. So, uh, shout out to the late lamented All Game Guide. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Comment below, did, have you ever used the All Game Guide? It was at allgame.com. As a matter of fact, if you go to the Internet Wayback Machine, if you know what that is, you can Google it. And you can still find the All Game Guide and see some of the write-ups there. If you can do that, it was at allgame.com uh, uh, back in the day. Did you ever use that site? Do you remember that site? Um, just let me know in the comments below what were your memories of that. If you wrote for the All Game Guide, please comment below. That would be super awesome. If you could like this video, that would be very helpful. Subscribe to the channel. Once I get to a thousand subs, I'm going to talk about the worst gaming moment of my life. Thank you so much. We will talk to you guys later. Peace out.